Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. And don't forget to like the video, it supports the channel a lot. Today, let's look at leak code 46 permutation. And this is more of a math problem than it is actually like a coding problem, which makes it kind of difficult. So we're given an array of numbers, a list of distinct numbers, and we want to return all possible permutation. And lucky for us, we can do that in any order we want. So in the first example, we have one, two, three. Every single permutation is listed. Every single permutation is unique as well. Now, what even is a permutation? If you look at this array, it has three values, right? Three unique values. How do we know how many permutations we can even make from that? Well, it's a math problem, right? So we have three positions. We know that in the first position, we can pick any of these three values. So we have three choices. In the second position, since we already chose one of these values, now we only have two values left. So in this position, we can pick two values. In the last position, we know there's only one value left remaining, so we do that. And so it's three times two times one. So it's six permutations that we can make. And looking at the result, there are exactly six. So that's a little bit of like the math background. If you wanna solve this problem on pen and paper, it's actually not that bad, right? Because Let's say we have like a decision tree type thing. In the first choice, if we're picking the first value, we have three choices, right? We can pick one, two, or three. In the second, if we pick a one, then we don't, we can't pick a one again, so we can pick a two or a three. Lastly, if we pick a, if we picked a one and a two, then we can only pick a three here. Here we can pick a two, and I'm gonna repeat that for the other examples as well. And lastly, we picked a three, a one, so we can do a two here. And here's the opposite, we can do a one. So this is the decision tree, but how does this help us? If you notice, these are the permutations, right? One, two, three is the first permutation. Next, one, three, two is the next permutation. And we could just keep doing this all day, right? Three, two, one is the last permutation. So solving this problem on pen and paper is actually not that bad, but writing the code to do it is a little bit more difficult. And I'm gonna show you the algorithm to do that. So initially we have our input array, right? With three values. The first thing I wanna do is say, okay, Let's say I got rid of this one and I just want you, I just want the permutations of these two values. Then I can go down my decision tree down here and I can now start getting all permutations of two and three. So I took this big problem, right? We had three values here. I took it to a sub problem where now we only have two values. And I wanna take it one step further. We have two values. I'm gonna get rid of this two and now I want all permutations of this three. So I'm gonna go down my left decision, tr the left uh, subtree one more time. And now this is the base case. Clearly we can't really go any further. There's nothing left. All permutations of three are just gonna be three. So now we're actually gonna go back up our decision tree. This was the base case, right? With just one three. And we got rid of the two, remember? So we have to add it again. So we'll add it to the end of this list. So it's a little messy visually, but the new list is gonna be three and two, right? So that's one permutation of two and three. So I'm just gonna put it over here, three and two and we can repeat that process. So we already looked at this case. Now we wanna look at the case where we find all permutations of two so we can get rid of this three. And then we're gonna go down our right subtree. And again, we get to a base case. So we're done with this value. And so in our code recursively, we're gonna go back up and we're gonna remember that we removed the three, so we're gonna add it back to our list. And then you can see we have two values in our list still, two and three. 
So I'm just going to put that down over here, 2 and 3. So these are the two permutations we got with these two values. And one more time, we're going to return back up. We remember we removed this one as we were going down our left subtree. So, so to each of these two lists, we're going to append a one. We're going to add it to the end. So a one here and a one here. So now, so far, we found two permutations. We can add that to our result now. So one permutation is 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1. So this is like the main idea. This is what we're going to be doing as we uh, repeat the process for these other subtrees. And then recursively, as we compute like the subproblem, as we get permutations of smaller and smaller lists, we're going to take those permutations, return them back up to the result, and then we're going to add them to our result here. And at the end, we should have six of them and we can return that. Okay, so now let's write the code and I'm going to do this recursively because it's it's like a backtracking solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is have our result and it's going to be a list. And the next thing you want to take care of recursively is always the base case. And our base case is if the length of nums is equal to one. If there's only one value, then it only has one permutation, obviously. So we can return that and we have to return it as a list of lists, right? Because if you look at this third example, they pretty much hint to you even if you have one value, it's going to need to be a list of lists. So I'm going to take this list, I'm going to take nums, and I'm going to make a copy of it. The next thing we want to do is we want to go through every value in nums. So we're going to take the first value and pop it off. So we're going to say nums pop zero. So pop the value at the zeroth index. And if you look at uh, the visual explanation, that's what we're doing here, right? We took the first value and we're popping it off. And then we're going to get the permutations of these two values. So permutations of, so this is the recursive call. And we're going to pass in nums, which now is going to have two values instead of three. So next, we're going to go through each permutation. So for example, if we had 2 and 3, and we had 3 and 2, to each of these, we want to append the first value that we just removed, which uh, in the first example would be 1. So we're going to append 1, and then we're going to have two permutations. We're going to take these permutations and then add them to our result. Lucky for us in Python, if you want to add multiple values to a list or an array, you can just call a function result.extend the perms, the permutations that we just got. And you don't want to forget to clean up what we just did. We took our array and we removed an element from it, so we can't forget to add that element back. Except this time, it's going to be appended at the end of the, uh, of the array. Last but not least, once our loop is done, once we've gotten all permutations, we can return the result. And now this time, really not last but not least, don't forget your typos. I forgot my S, and now it should work. So this is kind of slow, right? It's slower than usual. Did we make a mistake? Well, let's just cheat a little bit and use a neat little trick. Instead of nums.copy, I'm going to do some Python stuff. And this time it's going to go much faster. So this time it's 86%. I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe to support the channel. It helps out a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.